gospel lesson this morning. Love God or love the world. And we want to look at the aspect that we can't do both. Not completely and totally. But so many, even in the church, and remember these verses that we'll read in a moment, are talking about church members. Talking about people who have professed Christ as our Lord and Savior. But you know, we can profess Christ and not know Christ, and not follow Christ. And Billy Graham once said, we will be surprised when the call is made that many church members, and he, he said, majority of church members will be left behind. We need to evaluate our lives and see if we are prepared to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Face to face. Love God or love the world. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. And let those who can, let us stand in reading of God's word. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. You may be seated. The scripture is clear. It is forceful in its statement. A man either loves the world or he loves God. Today, I want us to evaluate our lives and see which do we love. Not just in words, but in deed and in truth. Because I think so many are going to come to find themselves at the day that Christ comes back to find him, uh, themselves where Christ will say, I never knew you, depart from me. Because it's not just saying words, it's doing the deeds and truth. There is no neutrality between loving the world and loving God. Many are trying to do both and sit on the fence, and you cannot do it as the word of God says today. For Jesus himself said, no man can serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24. The person who loves the world, does not know God. The person who loves this world does not know God, not personally and not completely. The world, the cosmos, means the earth and the heaven that are passing away. We need to realize this world that we know of now, the cosmos, is going, is deteriorating, and one day it will be destroyed. And we need to make sure that we are loving God with everything that we are. The world is corruptible and deteriorating and will be eventually be destroyed. When John spoke of the world, he was speaking of the world system. The total of humanity, a life that exists apart from God. You know, if we really examine our life, how much of our lives do we live each day is on our own terms instead of on God's terms and obeying what God has to say to us. The total human life that exists apart from God is a world system. John quoted Jesus' words in John 8, 12, I am the light of the, I am the, light of the world. He that followeth me shall never walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Once we were in darkness, once we lived according to this world, but when we truly accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, we accept the light, and we are not part of the world. We are not live like the world. We are not to uh, watch what the world watches. We are not to read what the world reads. We are to let God lead, guide, and direct us in all that we say and do. 
Believers are not to love this world so much that they desire to stay here more than they desire to go to be with God in heaven. You know, many of us, we are scared of dying. But really, why? Because we know that when death reaches us, we're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be in a much better place. We're going to be where you don't have to worry about the virus. You don't have to worry about the diseases. You don't have to worry about the riots. You don't have to worry about all that's going on in our world. Because one day, for those who have truly accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, one day we will stand in the presence of God. And there will be no sin whatsoever there. But will we be happy? Yes. You'll be happier than you've ever been before because you'll be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Believers must not love the sinful uh, system of this world. A person is not to love this world, its possessions, pleasures of the world. He is to love God. And you know, we are, just this week I've been reading about some of the richest people and, you know, we think if we just had the money, we could be happy. I was reading about a gold medalist who had won the gold in Olympics right, right far back. But as he was talking, he was talking how miserable he was. I was reading about some that had uh, climbed Mount Everest. And they thought when you got to the top of the world, but say, say, that one guy said, as soon as I got there, I took a few pictures. I probably wasn't there five minutes. And I come down disappointed because what else do I have to do? You know, money can't buy happiness. Possessions, prestige, power, none of these can buy happiness and joy and victory and abundant life. But Jesus Christ can. The election's coming up. The Democrats or Republicans are not going to solve our problems. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ that can solve our problems. But we've got to keep our eyes upon Him. We've got to love Him more than we love this world that we're living in right now. We're not to become more attracted to this world than we are to God and to heaven. And Romans uh, 12, 2, it says, Do not. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to this world. Do not, the word of God says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Who renews our mind? The Lord Jesus Christ. Let him change you. Let him give you the uh, desires of the heart. God's type of love is agape love, a self-sacrificing kind of love. In verse 16, John is talking about the man who loves this world. And when you look at it, and you see why. Verse 17 is talking about the man who does the will of God. Both of these are in the church. Both of these have professed Christ. Scripture pronounces a terrible truth to those who profess Christ in verse 16. And as we uh, read verse 16 here, it says, For everything in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, Heavenly Father, but comes from the world. But yet those in the church are living just like they are of this world. And they do not love God. And he says right here in uh, this verse that we need to be aware of the great and dangerous temptations. It is to compromise our faith in our world. How many today, what was evil and uh, say 20, 30 years ago, people would have stood up in abhorrence to. We accept just a way of life now. But we need to know that what was sin in the Bible is sin today. The Bible, God's word, has not changed. 
no matter how much culture or nature or anything else tries to, the word of God has not changed. And if it was sin, then it's sin today. And we need to make sure that we're not living according to the uh, unrighteousness of this world, that we're living according to what God calls us to live by. Because they love the world. The love of the Father is not in them, the scripture says. They love the things of this world more than they love God and doing God's will. The professing man follows after the world system the lust of the flesh. Look around you. Look at the TV. Lust of the flesh. It's all over the place. You go to check out lines at the store, magazines right there. You look at the TV, you can hardly find any that does not have the lust of the flesh. We need to make sure we're not looking at it, we're not watching it, we're not reading about it, that we turn our eyes upon the Lord instead of the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. You know, pornography is a multi-billion dollar business in our day and time. And they are not all those on the outside of the church. It's a lot of church people are doing the same thing. That is wrong. That is of the world, not of God. And the pride of life. But we want to look at the works of the flesh as seen in uh, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Can a person who live, has lived like this or receive eternal life? Yes if they will uh, confess their sins to God and turn away from them. Not if they say, oh, I'm sorry, I got caught, and go right back to doing it again. You have not uh, felt uh, the need to ask for forgiveness. Because if we ask forgiveness, we'll turn away from it. Repentance means we turn. Turn away from it and turn to God. Now, if you just turn away from it, the word of God says that uh, evil will come back and you'll be worse off than you first. You need to turn away from it and turn to God. And turning away from it means that we don't go and uh, just keep doing what we've been doing. We need to forsake our sins and look to God as our Lord and Savior. Then it goes down, I didn't have it, I want to read, the fruit of the Spirit, what our lives should look like. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. We are to do the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Not because of what somebody else does or don't do. We are to live a righteous life because we are Christians and we are to live for Christ as our Lord and Savior. As desperately as unbelievers may try to please God, they cannot please God. In Romans 8, Romans 8, 7 and 8, it says unto us, The mind governed by the flesh, this body, is hostile to God. It does not submit to God, nor can it do so. Look at our world. And it is getting more and more hostile to God. And the world, the flesh, cannot please God. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. That's not me saying that. That's the Bible. That's why so many people are miserable today. Because they're trying to live for God and they're trying to live for the world. And they cannot decide. The Word of God says, choose you this day whom you will serve. We need to make that choice. And then we need to live up to that decision we make. The lust of the eyes is seeing and wanting to have what one sees. Does this work? What about commercials that we watch every time? 
Why are they so uh, on TV? You know, you may not have thought about a thing and see it on TV and advertise it, and all of a sudden you start wanting it. And then after you keep seeing it, you start to desire it. And then you can't live without it. And you know, Satan is like that too. He causes us to look at sin and, oh, it's not so bad. We rationalize it and we start wanting it and then we fall for it. We fall for it. Lust for others have uh, and what uh, uh, they want and what we see. It becomes wrong when we see and desire what is forbidden by God. You know, we don't have to ask ourselves, God, is this wrong? If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. God does not change his mind. And we need to make sure that we live according to what God says. And if the word of God says it's wrong, we don't have to ask God, God, is this wrong for me? Is this wrong for, to read this, do this, see this, act like this? If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong, period. And right there in our Galatians, we saw two sets. The one that we should forsake, and the one we should be living out each and every day of our lives. And when uh, the lust of the eyes uh, consume us, upon our lust and our indulgence on ourselves, it's wrong. There is a pride of life. Pride goes before a fall all the time. The Bible says we are to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then God says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive your sins, and I will heal your land. The word, uh, the pride of life, the uh, word translated pride is the same word used in John, James 4, 16, translated boasting. Pride of life means self-centeredness, I, me, and mine. A person who focuses on himself and wants what he wants, no matter what God says, no matter what it hurt, if it hurts somebody else or anything else, he wants what he wants. He feels little, if any, need for God. The professing man is not of God. Even though he's in church, even though he has professed Christ, he is not of uh, God, he is of the world. In James, James 1, 14 and 15, James 1, 14 he said, and 15, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. We can't live like the world and expect to get to heaven. We are to live like Christ. And we need to be careful how we live each and every day of our lives. Then in verse 17, we see the obedient man. Second part of 17. The man who does the will of God will abide forever. And uh, 1 John 2, 17, uh, B, it says, But whoever does the will of God lives forever. Eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ. He lives forever, period. To be of God means to be spiritually born of God and to be living in obedience to God. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13 says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. As we live this life on this earth, as we see all that's going on, as we read about the judgment of God in the word of God, what kind of lives are we to live holy and godly lives? Especially as we look forward to the day and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destructions of heaven by fire. The elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where our righteousness dwells. What is going to happen to the world? 
the world that we're living in now, it's going to be destroyed. But what is going to happen to those who trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior? Looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where our righteousness dwells and to hear our Lord and Savior enter ye in, my good and faithful servant. The man who attaches himself to this world system and lives for I, me, and mine and the world's ways is giving his life to things which literally is going deteriorating and will be destroyed. But the man who has taken God as the center of his life and has given himself to the things of God lasts forever for eternity. This is the reason the wise man turns away from the world, for it will be destroyed, but he turns to God. He wants God and the life God offers, both abundant and eternal. Thus he seeks after the will of God to do what God commands that he uh, live with God forever. The man of the world is doomed to disappointment. And we're seeing that even now. Suicides and all that's going on in our world, the greed, the immorality, the uh, racial riots and all that's going on is doomed to disappointment. But the man of God is certain of everlasting joy. Why? Because we are not of this world. We are the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know that this world is not all there is. That we've got a better place prepared for us because of our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And if you're here today, you don't know for 100% for sure you need to get right with God today. Maybe you need to get right with God where you're at. Maybe you need to walk down uh, this aisle. Maybe you need just to kneel down after the service and say, God, forgive me. For I have tried to live a divided life. I want to know you. I want to know that I'm going to heaven. But God, I love this world and the things of this world. And the word of God we've just read says we cannot do that. We have to choose whom we will serve. Will we serve the Lord Jesus Christ and give him all of our lives? You make that decision today as we come. And you make that decision because we need to evaluate our lives and make sure that we are prepared whenever the time comes. We are prepared to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, face to face. Are you ready? Or do you need to make, get, make right with God right now? We are closing him today is Jesus keep me near the cross. We're going to sing the first and last.